Welcome to Farmer's Universe. In this podcast, we'll create content based on people and facts, which can inspire and help you in improving your farm performance. For more than 20 years, we have seen problems with hoof diseases in dairy farming. But why is that so and how can we deal with it? I know that is a big question, but today uh, in Farmer's Universe, we would try to give you some facts and a historical view of hoof health with a focus on digital dermatitis, which is one of the most common hoof diseases in dairy farming. And now I would like to welcome Jan Storgård, which is a technical advisor in Vilofos and uh, pretty much an expert in this exact topic of uh, hoof health. Welcome to Farmer's Universe, Jan. Thank you so much, Jakob. Today I would like to have a conversation with you regarding hoof problems and why that is a common problem in high-yielding dairy farms. So Jan, could you please uh, tell us a bit about hoof problems in general and the, the history behind it? Thank you for, for that introduction and uh, definitely hoof health and especially decatural dermatitis is a big uh, subject. It, it's, uh, there is a lot of different issues behind this. And I will try my best today to, to go through uh, as much as possible. And I think it's interesting to look just a bit on uh, history uh, as a start, uh, because we know that going back in time, when cows were mainly in a tie stall, we saw much less uh, cases of, for instance, digital dermatitis, but also hoof uh, diseases in general. And now going on to the free stall that we have almost everywhere in the Western uh, world, we see that hoof problem, hoof diseases are increasing. And today, for instance, in, in Western Europe, or Denmark, for instance, we have around 20, 25% of all cows in a herd will have problems with uh, digital dermatitis. And if you look at farm to farm, almost every farm, say, say above 99% of all farms, will have cows with DD. So it is a major problem. It's also a quite costly a uh, problem for, for dairy farmers, especially the acute cases of digital dermatitis that will give a cow pain and also will bring a lame cow and will eventually reduce milk yield and uh, the health in general. So it is something that has a, a, a great amount of focus and it is something that many farmers try their best to solve, that's for sure. And so then we can look at this uh, level of, of DD Nowadays, I mentioned it was around 20-25%, and I know that almost every uh, farmer has a kind of a system in which they will try to control this, uh, we call it DD here, so a shortening for digital dermatitis. And, and so every farmer will have some kind of system to try and control this uh, infection, this disease. And the, the usual kind of setup is to have a hoof bath. And in this hoof bath, Around the world, you would normally see products like either copper sulfate or even more, maybe uh, formalin. And uh, so those two products has a long history already. And there is for sure some benefits on in those products in terms of controlling uh, DD. But the level around 20-25% just tells us that this is probably not the right approach. So something is not completely right. And the thing we have discovered during the development of our product Hoofers is that we need a different, uh, we need to attack this problem from many different angles. And definitely we should not focus only on, for instance, killing bacteria like the case is for copper sulfate and formalin. So again, if you let your cows go through a hoof bath, where you have added uh, formalin in the right dose, the right concentration, you will definitely have a, a cleanup of a DD wound. You will definitely have a, a kill, quite powerful kill, of whatever bacteria, treponema for instance, that are in this wound. Problem is, the cow would have to eventually go back in to the, the cow barn, and you, we all know that in the cow barn we have heaps of uh, a manure, urine, moisture. So what happens, and also, of course, a lot of uh, bacteria. So what happens is that when the cow goes back into the barn, 
this wound, this DD wound, will be reinfected. Okay, so this relief from this high bacterial load is very short. So, of course, it's it's for me at least, it's, it's, it's easy to understand that we need something else. So, um, if we look back at the last, the past 20 years, uh, why haven't we seen a, um, what should I say, a positive development in hoof health and uh, and the currents of uh, digital uh, dermatitis? Yeah, uh, that's a that's a good question, uh, Jakob, and uh, I I kind of answered some of that earlier. But again, it must be the 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 way that farmers try to control this is do only through disinfection, okay? And disinfection is not the right approach in a highly polluted uh, cow barn where there is billions of bacteria that will reinfect a wound as soon as the cow goes back into the barn. So we need to look at something else. And in this development uh, of our own product, we kind of looked further. And we took some inspiration from uh, one of our major products called Stelos NF. And this approach is that if you take a cow, put it out on, out on pasture, on grass, leave it there 24-7. What usually happens is this cow will not have major issues with digital dermatitis. Why is that? Well, yes, of course, less bacteria, but you also find those bacteria that causes DD, you also fi- find them outside in the nature. So I, I understand it's because of the load of, of bacteria is lower, but it is also something else according to us. So we have just realized that this polluted in, uh, hoof environment with loads of moisture, manure, bacteria, urine, and especially urine because urine together with uh, manure will create ammonia. And we have just realized that ammonia combined with moisture is something that is highly uh, irritating and actually corrosive to the tissue, to the skin of a cow. So if we look at, the, for instance, the rear uh, legs of a cow, we look at the hooves and we look just above the hoof. W- this is the classical place where you will have an attack and a, and a case of DD. And why is that? Well, if a cow walks through the cow barn, comes into contact with he- heaps of moisture, ammonia, and of course bacteria, what happens is the cow's protective surface will be broken down by ammonia and moisture. And then there is an easy access for bacteria to infect and cause DD. The thing is, the the skin of a cow, mammals in general, that means also humans, on the skin of a cow, we have something called sebum. Sebum is, is a vaxy secrete. It is composed of harmless bacteria and also organic acids. So the function of this sebum is to keep the skin moist, keep it flexible so no cracks will be formed, no root of infection, and finally also to keep a low pH value. This low pH value is something many pathogenic bacteria do not like. And especially Treponema, one of the major players in DD, comes into contact with an intact uh, surface with sebum, organic acids, and so on, will actually be inhibited, and the chance of infection is low. So this is the the case when a cow is outside on pasture and grass. When you put it in the barn, what happens if you have a you have ammonia, pH value in concentrated form, 13, so highly alkaline, you have moisture, and this combination breaks down the acidic sebum, dries out the skin, form cracks, and now suddenly this normally weak bacteria Treponema can infect. Okay, so a long story, but what it means is just we need to try and block this impact from the hoof environment. And if we do so, is there then a chance for the cow to actually, through the immune system, to heal this wound by itself? 
so you uh, you are talking a bit about it already, but what is your point of view regarding hoof problems? How do we solve it or at least try to minimize it in the future? Yeah, so to answer that question, I will go a bit back in history in the early days when we started developing our product Hoofers. And what we did is we went on a Danish farm, major problems with DD, around 50% of all cows had uh, DD. And so we also saw a solid floor with a lot of, of uh, liquid slurry, high pH value because of ammonia, a lot of moisture. And what we did, we just went and we uh, sprinkled a lot of mineral acids in powder form directly on the, on the floor. And we did that a couple of times per week to try and prevent this impact from this harmful hoof environment. And we did that for six months. And when we came back, we found that the level of DD was reduced from 50% to below 3%. So extremely effective. And this actually was written in magazines and so on at that time. Uh, and but So now we had a nice, <laughs> good solution. Problem was that it was just too expensive, too much work to, to add, you know, several hundred kilos of a powder product uh, two times per week. So in order to actually develop a product that could uh, do this job in a much more simple way and less costl costly, we went on in developing uh, this liquid product called Hoofos. And uh, the thing is, if we can't control the environment, uh, we have to prevent the environment from having any impact on the cow, the skin area where the cow developed DD. And so we have those mineral acids still. We have dissolved them, in so it's a liquid form, and it can be sprayed directly on the skin in the area where there is a DD case or where there potentially could develop, be developed a DD case. And this will dry out, and it leaves a mineral acidic uh, layer that is very resistant, and it binds hard to the skin. And when the cow walks in the barn, and it is exposed to manure, slurry, whatever, uh, it prevents this from getting into contact with this problem area. Uh, because it is acidic, it neutralizes ammonia, so there is no corrosive effect and breakdown through ammonia. It has a high drying effect, so any moisture that comes into contact with this DD area will also be uh, removed. Uh, also, it has the ability to dissolve biofilm. And now I just stop for a while and rewind, because the well-known product copper sulfate and formalin has those two products have two major uh, effects. One is of course to kill, but the other one is also to dissolve biofilm. So we know now if we have a chronic case of uh, DD, has been there for some time, that therefore it's chronic. We know that uh, biofilm is developed within the wound, and once this is done, it is difficult and hard to uh, treat, control, and heal this wound. This biofilm is produced by bacteria and, and fungus that works together, and many uh, by, uh, antibiotics, actually, and uh, disinfectants cannot penetrate biofilm, cannot do anything to in terms of, of healing the DD wound. This can be done by a copper sulfate very effectively. It dissolves, breaks down biofilm, kills the bacteria. This can be done with formalin, dissolves the biofilm, breaks down bacteria. Perfect. Problem is with those two products, they continue to break down. Especially formalin is very is a tissue dissolver, so it really irritates the wound. It breaks down more tissue and it really stops the healing of the wound. Copper sulfate, similar. So why am I explaining this? Well, we need something can, that can dissolve this biofilm without hurting the tissue, without stopping the wound healing. And this, this actually can be done also with, with uh, hoofers. Finally, one more very important thing, the bacteria that causes DD, typonema mainly, are anaerobic. It means they cannot live around oxygen. If oxygen gets into close contact, they will die. That's one thing. The other thing is, if the cow's immune system should be able to heal the wound, this immune system in the close proximity of the wound surface needs oxygen. If there is no oxygen, there is no wound healing. 
And this is very smart for trypanema because trypanema forms this, this biofilm so no, no, no oxygen can go into the wound. And also trypanema produces something we call hydrogen sulfide. Why? Because hydrogen sulfide breaks down oxygen. So if there is any oxygen left, it will be broken down instantly. That means now we have trypanema very protected, no oxygen comes in, and the immune system is impaired. There is absolutely no healing. Now we have a chronic wound. We want to remove uh, the biofilm. We want to flush out and clean. And we want to add something that can break down this hydrogen sulfide, because then trypanema can no longer keep oxygen away from its surrounding. This we also can do with PUFOS. Finally, we need something to close the wound, because if we don't close the wound, eventually the cow, as said, will go back in the barn, and a lot of dirt, bacteria, ammonia, and so on will go in the wound, and it becomes difficult for the cow to heal. So we need something that can form a scab, a clot. And this is also something we have in, in hoofers, a blood clotting effect. So we have the formation of a scab that protects the wound. Oxygen is high, no ammonia comes in, no moisture comes in. And now it is all up to the cow's immune system. And that's uh, actually quite easy. So if we, if we remove all those secondary effects that actually drive this infection, the cow can easily heal. And if it is an acute, painful M2, as we call it, ligatory dermatitis wound, if you take all those damaging factors away, the cow can heal it within a week. So it is very effective. So here I'm standing e explaining about hoofers, but the reason for that is actually to explain to you how many different angles we believe we need to attack in order to have the right effect. Yeah, it's not only disinfection. Exactly. Disinfection alone in a highly polluted environment doesn't make any sense. And I think the number is 20 to 25 percent. DD has been like then that for years. Clearly shows that. And now I'm a bit curious. Uh, do you have some uh, results uh, regarding uh, farmers using hoofers? Yes. So we have a quite a bit of, of uh, scientific data now, and we also have feedback and results from farm trials uh, around, you know, in many different countries. But in general, what we see uh, is if a farmer starts with uh, hoofers, we see a fast uh, decrease in the more acute painful cases of uh, DD within the first month. So let's say it is that I had a case at Georgsleo Gus here in Denmark, they were around, I think, 30%. After the first month, they were down to 15%. That was mainly the acute cases of, of uh, DD. Uh, the following month, uh, that means eight more months, we saw a more flat decrease, but we saw a continuously de de decreasing level of DD, and we ended up around less than 3%. And I visited that f uh, farm a couple of years later, and he was down to a couple of cows, each hoof trimming out of, uh, I think it was uh, 350 cows. So very low. We have a scientific study from back in time from a precursor of hoofers done by Nunecaprium with, with significant effect where we compared it to um, salicylic acid. We saw a similar effect, but salicylic acid was, of course, faster. We have now, l finally, I will mention, we have a trial running in Germany with... Uh, Dr. Andrea Fiedler and uh, Charlotte Krüger, uh, amongst others, and they are seeing a significant effect of uh, hoofers in a control study. So yes, we have a lot of good, good experience, and I would say in general, if the product is used correct, uh, correctly, best in a sprayer, you spray in the milking parlor, or you spray with the rotary, or if you have robots and no possibility of uh, adding sprayers to the robots, you can uh, walk around in a cow barn with a knapsack sprayer and you can spray the cows in headlocks, and if possible. Often, and how often do you need to, to put the spray on? You will do that twice a week. So you will start up with Monday, Thursday, and you should go for that six, 12 months at least. If you see very nice, significant results, you could start 
to experiment and do maybe only once per week. And you will see within a short period of time, let's say f three, four weeks, you will see if this is not enough and then you just return to twice. But often it is actually enough. Okay, Anne. Uh, so could it be possible for you to uh, to sum up what we have been uh, discussing uh, today? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, yeah, for me, our experience over the last couple of years in developing this product, Hufos, is that the environment is a major player. Bacteria is all around, and of course in high number in a cow barn. But bacteria alone, Trypanema alone, is not enough to cause though those problems we see nowadays with high levels of DB. We need a different approach. We need to control the impact from the environment. And we need to accept that digital dermatitis is something you have to attack from many, many different angles. Uh, that's, that's kind of the sum up for this, I would say. Okay, and now we go to our little uh, funny thing here in Farmers Universe, uh, Five for Farmers. I'll uh, ask you five questions and you have to answer pretty quick. Okay, are you ready? Okay, I will try my best. What is the most exciting experience you've had on a farm? So what do you mean by exciting? <laughs> do you mean good results or just a funny thing? <laughs> you decide. Okay. Well, once I slipped on a farm and got, got completely soaked in manure. <laughs> and the farmer didn't see it, and I had to go back and, and try and explain why I looked like that. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Uh, the next one. What is your favorite animal? Cows, of course. What is your favorite meal? That'll be something with, with minced, minced meat, I think. Beef meat, yeah. On a scale from 1 to 10, how much do you think about the sustainability in your everyday life? Quite a lot, actually. I would say seven. And last but not least, how was it to join this podcast, Farmers Universe? Nice experience. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Jan. Uh, Jan, thank you so much for joining us here at Farmers Universe today. Uh, this was our second episode. And remember to follow Farmers Universe where you listen to podcasts. Could be Spotify, Apple, Google, uh, etc., have a nice day, everyone, and thank you for listening to Farmers Universe. Thank you.